Humans have had a close relationship with animals for thousands of years. Scientists agree the domestic dog has been a trusted pet for around 15,000 years. And cats became part of the household from 10,000 years ago. And now it's estimated there are at least 600 million pet cats in the world. Exotic pets have also been kept for thousands of years. It's well documented that the Egyptians kept baboons as pets and exotic animals kept in the home feature in many ancient texts. In modern times, the keeping of exotic pets has increased. A staggering statistic is that there are more tigers in the U.S. alone than there are in the wild. Animal owners truly believe they are playing a role in preserving the numbers of exotic animals. But on the other side of the debate, there are those who believe it is a cruel practice to keep any animals in captivity. This series explores the issues from both sides, from those who know the dangers, but see the benefits, to others who condemn the keeping of exotic pets. Their stories follow. Birds of prey are instantly recognized as predators. They are built to hunt and are some of the fastest animals on Earth. One man in Utah, USA, is closer to these birds than most of us are ever likely to be. Martin Tyner is not only a recognized expert on birds of prey, he also shares his life and his home with some unusual bird friends. Uh, this is a prairie falcon, her name is Cirrus. She is uh, one of our desert falcons here in, in North America. She does live in the house. Basically, the reason she lives in the house is, is these animals are very wild, very high strung, very difficult to deal with, and they require um, a lot of socialization, a lot of interaction with people uh, in order to be uh, comfortable, especially when I'm out doing wildlife programs in an audience of 500 to 1,000 people the birds have to be comfortable. And so she, she comes in, she goes out in the daytime, but she comes in the house and hangs out and watches TV with the family. And she's just truly a member of the family. She's very sweet and she loves to talk to me. Martin is a master falconer and an educator, and he is heavily involved with the conservation of birds of prey. But he is very aware of the dangers of keeping these large birds, and he never forgets where they have come from. Uh, this is this is in every respect. This is a wild animal. Even though even though you know she's worked with me and and we get along wonderfully together, she still is wild. She still has a very strong fight or flight instinct. She still has. She's still instinctively afraid of humans. And so, but you know, being again in the house in her location, strangers and cameras and things. That's 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 pretty tough on her. Uh, and so the hood is actually her protection against stress. Um, it just covers her eyes, so now she can kind of just sit quietly and, and she doesn't feel frightened. Putting a small leather hood over the head of the bird instantly quietens them down and gives the bird a sense of security. Martin is an expert on the handling of birds. So taking his feather friend back to her pen is a simple procedure. Having a bird of prey as a pet might be a different story altogether. It actually isn't quite like a dog or cat in, in that with a dog or cat, uh, they have been um, domesticated. They want to be with you. They want to be your friend. Uh, when it comes to apex predators like this falcon and my eagle and my hawk that I fly, these animals don't necessarily like you. They don't necessarily want to be with you. They don't necessarily uh, respect you in any way, shape, fashion, or form. But what they do is they exploit you. So the truth of the matter is she's the hunter, I'm her dog. You know, falconry is one of very, very few relationships between man and wildlife that's mutually beneficial. Uh, we don't own these birds in any way, shape, fashion, or form. We serve them well. 
and that's the only reason they come back. Many of the birds here are rescues or long-term patients needing rehabilitation. But some have been bred in captivity. This is about as high strung and difficult as you can deal with. And I've loved the challenge. She's really an amazing animal to work with. In no way is she a pet. She's strictly an apex predator, and, and you have to love that, but you never consider this a pet. You, she'll hurt you. There's my little BG. And as, as you can see, her posture is very, very different, even though I raised her. And this is, the, this is probably one of the most important things I can show people, is even though I've raised her, and even though she is as captive a bird of prey as you'll ever find, high bred hawk, every ounce of wild instinct is there. She acts very, very much like the wildest birds of prey that you'll ever see. And this particular bird, as long as we're hunting, she, she's, sheer, she's a joy. But if I'm not serving her well, then, then she's a bit of a brat. The body language that she's saying here is that I will allow you to come hunting with me, but damn it, don't touch me. She is absolutely in charge. Now, uh, again, on the head, I can touch her breast slowly, but even at that, hey, sweetie. But I have to watch those feet because that's what she kills with. Those razor sharp talons is what she uses to kill with. And so she can bite, but the bite really isn't nearly as, as bad as, as the feet. Hi, oh, baby. Yes, you're such a brat. But you're a goshawk, that's why, huh? There is no doubt that Martin loves his birds. But one of them is his favorite. Scout is an American golden eagle and has been with Martin for over 15 years. Their relationship is unique and crosses the borders between pet ownership and a mutual respect between animal and human. That's my boy. So this is an American Golden Eagle? Yeah, this is the Golden Eagle. They are protected under the Federal Eagle Act, which is actually protection above the Endangered Species Act. And so the Golden and the Bald Eagle, Scout, I know. They're OK. I know. You said, I don't know what that stuff is, and I don't like it. It's OK. It's my boy. It's my boy. It's okay, I know. Strangers in your house. This is the Golden Eagle. The farmer up in Wyoming was threatening to shoot him and I was called in by the federal government to rescue him before he got shot. So this is a, in every respect a full grown wild eagle. So we start from the bottom, work our way up big guy. And you can look at these feet, you know, 600 pounds per square inch of crushing power in those feet. He could drive those talons through my glove and crush the bones in my hand. So it's really good he likes me. We appreciate that. These large chest muscles are the motors that he uses to drive that beautiful six-foot wingspan, that beautiful six-foot wingspan that allows eagles to fly where hawks and falcons cannot. Eagles have been spotted at altitudes greater than 30,000 feet. Their strong eyesight is what enables them to be such precise and accurate hunters. My eagle can see eight times further than you can. And not only does he see eight times further, he has six times the number of light sensitive cells, the rods and cones on the back of the eye. So everything he sees is six times clearer. This eagle can spot a jackrabbit five miles away. And he does. We go out on the desert just north of town here. He flies free. He goes thousands of feet in the sky. He flies with the wild eagles. And he follows me as I flush out jackrabbits for him to catch. And so he flies like an eagle and hunts like an eagle. And, uh, and then if we don't catch any rabbits, he knows he can fly back, land on my glove, I'll feed him anyway. 
One day he got a little confused. Thousands of feet in the sky, no rabbits to be found. It was time to go home. So I blew my whistle, threw his toy out on the ground, and my eagle went into a wonderful dive. Headlong, vertical, about 145 miles an hour. It was impressive. But it became apparent very quickly he wasn't going for his toy. He was coming for my arm. When I woke up, I was six feet back, laying face down in the dirt, with my eagle standing next to me, looking down at me to say, why are you laying there? I had a long talk with my eagle that day, how I could not withstand the impact of an eight pound bird at 145 miles an hour, and I would appreciate if you'd never do that again. He dislocated my shoulder and damaged my back and knees. Looking after eagles does have its challenges. They are, after all, a major predator and can leave a nasty bite. He's the hunter, I'm his dog, and, uh, and he and I have been together now for 15 years, and so he's kept me for 15 years, so that's, that's wonderful. This is truly an honor, to be able to have literally your best friend as a wild golden eagle, and wild in, in every sense of the word, and, and to have the privilege of that wild animal coming right out of the sky, coming back to me, landing on my glove, and uh, being able to, to understand him is, is something that's, uh, that's almost beyond words. Martin often hand feeds sick or injured wild birds, nursing them back to health. But sometimes his care is not enough. Those times when I do have to euthanize an eagle, um, you know, it just, it really tears me up because, you know, I've dedicated my whole life to rescuing them. And so quite often I have to just uh, grab Scout and we'll just sit, sit out in a shady spot and, and we'll talk. Yeah, we'll get our feelings out. And, and to be honest with you guys, he doesn't care. You know, it, it heals me, he doesn't understand, but it, it, it allows me to, to vent and to feel better. Yeah, he's such a good boy. It could be easy to leave the story of Martin and his birds here, but there's much more to this man than just his love of birds. As we drive out to a remote desert area with a rehabilitated hawk in the back of his car, Martin is at his happiest. This is why he does what he does. The thrill of releasing a bird back into the wild is something he has experienced many times and he passes this joy onto visitors and bird lovers whenever he can. The Southwest Wildlife Foundation of Utah was started by Martin to assist in returning eagles and other birds of prey back into the wild after injuries sustained mainly by human intervention. Over 100 birds a year are rehabilitated and returned to the wild, an incredible statistic considering that the person responsible for helping these animals was not always a big fan of birds. Well, actually, as a child, I was terrified of them. My earliest childhood memory was uh, such a, a horrible fear of birds. I had uh, climbed up on the uh, kitchen table at my grandparents' house. They, my grandfather had a pet parakeet, and as a little tiny toddler, I decided I'd pet the, the pretty green little bird in the cage. I stuck my hand in there and, and went to pet the bird. The bird bit me, and I pulled away from the, the bird, and, and, the, and me and the cage and everything fell off the table and, and smashed everywhere, and, and it was traumatic, and that caused me to, to have a, a tremendous fear. And it was getting worse and worse. Every time I'd see even a sparrow fly overhead, I'd scream, run for the house. Keeping a few birds for education and friendship is important to Martin. But he sees what we are doing today as being far more beneficial, especially after he has spent many weeks or months treating so many injured animals. But does he feel a loss when the birds just fly away? I get asked all the time from people, you know, you've put your heart and soul into rescuing these animals and they just fly away. Does that make you feel bad? And the truth of the matter is, no, that's, that is my reward. Like I said, we don't get paid for this. 
my reward is the knowledge that there's one more beautiful eagle, hawk, owl, whatever, back in the sky. There's one more beautiful deer, or coyote, or fox back in the wild. That's, that's my reward. It's always a really good day when I can turn something loose. Today, Martin has enrolled some help with the latest release. It's an emotional moment, and neither of the men know quite what to expect. You'll release the bird. You just follow my instructions and you'll be perfectly safe. And, and I'll take the bird out of its box. I will uh, hand the bird to you and I'll show you how to hold it properly. And then we'll just walk over to the rock fence right there and hold the bird for as, as long as you're comfortable. And then I'll, all I want you to do is take the bird and just throw it. Yeah. And, and it, should, uh, it should go. And you will be the last person on the planet to ever touch that beautiful hawk. Just hold it right into your chest, yeah. just, just like this. And then when you're ready to release her, then all you're going to do is just take her and just throw her right up in the air. Okay. So it's, it's very, very simple. Let me strike this. And I don't want you to release her with the hood on. That would no, be very no, bad. No, that's not good. Hey, sweetie, you're the baby girl. Yes, you are. You're a baby girl. Such a sweetheart. Okay. Now I want you to put your hands underneath, your fingers underneath mine and grab those feet. Grab both of them. Yeah. Okay, you got those. And you've got a hawk in your arms, yeah. and you will be, like I said, if all goes well, you'll be the last person to plant to ever touch that beautiful animal. Yeah, what a perfect purpose. Yeah. Let's go over here. Martin is just as enthusiastic today releasing this bird as he has been for many years. And with the wind blowing, it's probably going to go that way. Any opportunity to escape? She'll take it, and she'll fight with you, and she'll and she'll try to escape. But right now, she doesn't think she has an option. Yeah, because you so, keep the pressure on her. Yes. I've probably got more pressure than you would ever have. <laughs> you ready, I guys? know it's a little intimidating, but there no, you go. No, it's not intimidating. It's just uh, interesting. Yeah, it's great. Whenever you're ready, guys. Yeah, and I'm ready on my end. Jules? Yeah. So I still hold the legs. Just, just move it away from your chest yeah. and throw it up and release the legs at the same time. OK. Here we go. She's landed. Almost. Almost, but she will land. Now, now she's going to, uh, well, maybe she'll catch a little ridge lift and, go, and continue going up. She's still going. Yeah, she's going to go up. She's catching some ridge lift over there. Wow. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. That's, that's a privilege. Yeah. That's what I do. I just yeah, care for man. critters and put them back in the wild. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, you <laughs> yeah, it's an incredible experience. Yeah, amazing. I've never let anything go before. I tend to keep them and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like I said, I, that, this has been my entire life. Yeah. You know, my misguided life. Yeah. This is what I do. <laughs> no, it's a great thing to do. Yeah, it's, I think it's, so. it's a great thing to do. No, thank you very much. Well, you're, so. you're welcome. Very good.